Welcome back. Non-Corporate Girls is a podcast and lifestyle media platform built with your professional and entrepreneurial wellness in mind. NCG is your go-to digital diary filled with digestible content, expert advice, and tangible resources. Joining us now are the co-founders of Non-Corporate Girls LLC, Delilah Catalino and Ayana Dutton. Thank you both so much for joining me. Thank you for having us. Now, I'm really like excited to talk about this. Um, can you just first just explain what was the inspiration behind the creation of Non-Corporate Girls? Yes, absolutely. So Delilah and I both worked in corporate spaces and what we call non-corporate spaces. So, you know, side hustlers, freelancers, et cetera. And it was in working in one of our corporate environments where we both felt like we were dealing with a lot of toxicity. We felt like we were dealing with people who weren't understanding that we were people like the only ones in the space or the only women. Um, and we weren't getting what we like to call our four C's, which are creativity, cultivation, collaboration, and change. And we would vent a lot to each other. And so one day we were venting and we decided that we couldn't be the only people who felt this way. So we wanted to create a community where other people could feel like they had um, a tribe, you know, they had the support. We like to call each other accountability partners. So we really wanted to build that for um, our community and help them kind of navigate these spaces, kind of where the nine to five and five to nine meet. Now I can just imagine that it takes a lot of work to kind of uh, make a podcast. I know a lot of people today have one, um, and everybody has something to say, but I could imagine it takes a lot of work. So what really drew the both of you to like kind of take that step and say, you know, hey, let's actually do this because, you know, we may have something really great here. To be honest, it's so funny that you mentioned that it takes a lot of work because for us, it was something that literally came so natural. In those venting sessions, a lot of them happened through Gchat. And we literally like just the idea just popped in our heads like, Let's make this a podcast. And I kid you not, within maybe 15 to 20 minutes, I came up with the segments of what they could be. We like labeled them and we didn't think they'd be finalized, but it came so natural. And so we felt like maybe this is the medium that we have to go with um, to share our stories. Now, what can people um, expect when they actually interact with, you know, this project and they start listening? And also, is it, I know it's called Non-Corporate Girls, but, you know, is it for everyone to listen to? Can you just tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, we get this question a lot because when people think non-corporate, they think, oh, we're alienating corporate America. We're not. Non-corporate is literally a mindset. And where we want to help people kind of thrive is help them understand that they get to redefine how they pivot in their purpose. And that could look a lot of different ways. We talk to what we call three pillars, the nine to five. So your corporate professional, your entrepreneur, your five to nine, which is your entrepreneur, your founder. And then the people that sit in the middle of that, there are some people who work in corporate environments that have side hustles or passions, and they'll probably never leave their corporate environments, but they still want to be able to like thrive in what they're doing. And so when people interact with non-corporate girls, they're looking for one accountability partners because we hold everyone accountable for whatever it is that you want to do in your life, but also the support, the resources, the advice. We bring on a ton of guests. To date, we've had 43 amazing guests that are visionaries. You know, they fit into all three of our buckets and they really help people see how they've been able to pivot, how they be, have they've been able to launch their things that they're doing or just thrive in a corporate world. And so people come to us to really, again, help foster and create that community, tips, resources, advice, and anything we can give them in between. No, I, yeah, and to add, oh, I'm sorry. No, to you can add to that. I was going to gonna say, yeah, depending where you are in the journey, there's an episode that would resonate with you because we consider our um, episodes, our open digital diaries, where from like inception of this idea until present, we have taken our listeners on the journey of where we started and where we at and all the things that's happened between. So for anybody trying to jumpstart an idea or be creative or just feel empowered, there's going to be something on the podcast for you to digest. Now, you kind of mentioned it as your digital diary, and I can imagine anybody who had a diary or, you know, uh, think of something as a diary, you know, it's like you're really open and you're being very vulnerable. You know, how does that, you know, are there any challenges that come with that also, you know, kind of ha having a job in corporate America or are there anything, you know, that is there anything that scares you about being so open, um, basically having a digital diary? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we kind of think alike with this, but I think that for us, 
it was really about finding our voice. You know, we want to continue to show up authentically in everything that we do. And sometimes that looks different in different environments, right? And sometimes you have to help um, people like um, enroll into what does that look like for you because everyone's not always there. And so being vulnerable and open is definitely a learning experience for us. I think that when we first started, we probably evolved, right? And it, it goes with our, like Delilah said, the digital diary, but it goes with us as people. How we evolve as people every day is kind of how we look to the podcast. And so, like Delilah mentioned, we're taking you through our journey, our corporate jobs, our side hustles, building non-corporate girls. We're like putting it all out there for you. And yes, it's scary, but it's also empowering. And we want people to understand that this is the place for them. And so how can we ask people to like be vulnerable and let us into their world so that we can help guide them if we're not going to do the same thing? And Delilah, I wanted to know your opinion on that as well. Um, you know, how does it feel to be uh, just so vulnerable? Um, and I also think it's really interesting that, you know, when it comes to corporate America, everybody thinks it's like very stoic and there's not a lot of feelings involved and people are kind of harsh. So how does it feel to kind of on the flip side, be more open and be a little bit more emotional or more vulnerable? Um, I think it's definitely been therapeutic, to say the least and also um, has presented so many opportunities. There's so many people that reach out and feel heard and listen. And also, again, back to the empowerment, it's about finding your voice and speaking up. I know with like corporate America, uh, a lot of the stigmas is just that it's fast paced. It's easier to get overlooked because we may be the only people of color or the only women, um, or we just first starting out in our careers it can seem intimidating of how to get certain things across. And so those are, those are things that we struggled with. So just sharing them, um, it's only going to help us find solutions or find community with people who have already been through that and could provide their insight. So it, it's never like anything to lose, but so much to gain. Now, I really want to talk about the fact that you guys are both very successful women. Um, and you guys are like, I saw some of the stuff that you guys do. It was very impressive. And I was kind of like, I kind of wish that was me. Um, <laughs> but you guys did so many amazing things. But, you know, I, I really love the fact that there's still more to have. Right. And I think for a lot of times, especially for women of color or people from certain communities, once you have a good job, you know, it's like, that's it. You know, you've reached it. But, you know, what was the importance of saying like, you know what? No, there's more to me than just my career. And I could have a side hustle or, you know, do something else uh, with my time. I guess I'll start there. Um, to be honest, part of the ideation of non-corporate girls or just the entrepreneurial spirit came from the challenges that were posed toward me when I was trying to get into my field. Um, it was a very rude awakening graduating from college. Um, when I did, the the landscape was just really challenging. And so I had to pivot and find creative ways to kind of insert myself because I was so adamant about that this is what I was going to do. And so over the years, so much has changed in just how we can enter the spaces that we're in. Um, there's so much more accessibility. And so I kind of like ran with that and used that um use that to, to my privilege um, to be able to enter these spaces where I felt like previously it could have been very much like, you know, a boys club or who you know. And Ayana, I wanted to piggyback off of that. You know, can you just talk a little bit about, you know, in your experience, what it's like to kind of, you know, have this, this great career, but then say, you know, um, I actually want to do a little bit more with my time and I could help others now that I, I feel like I'm in a good space. Yeah, we talk about this all the time on the pod because, you know, especially in our like age range and just growing up, our whole lives are like wrapped in or like your life is supposed to be wrapped into your career. It's your identity. And it's like, that's not true. My job does not define me. And what does that look like outside of that? And I think going back to the empowerment and vulnerability piece, it takes a lot for someone to really want to like embrace that and really explore what do that, what does that look like outside of your nine to five job? And so for us, and me specifically, I really wanted to lean into like my passions and my interests and, you know, my impact and really creating communities at the core of all of that. And for what Delilah said, you know, we were in spaces where people, we didn't have the support, you know, we didn't find mentorship easy. We didn't have a clear directory on anything. And so we had to navigate all of that ourselves. And so if we can help 
lift other people up and do the same thing based on what we know and just create the lane for them. Um, it's just it's just really empowering for us. And I think as people, we're constantly evolving anyway. And so I think like the more we evolve, the more this looks different too, right? Like right now, this is where we're at, but we know that there's so much more to do for not just the brand, but for ourselves. And so that, that's what keeps me motivated to, to help others. Well, I want to thank you both so much for, you know, joining us and sharing this story. I was really inspired just in the little bit of time that I spoke to you. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for having us. For more information, you can visit their website at noncorporategirls.com.